Welcome to Postgres for MySQL DBAs. This is episode 12, Transactions. My name is Dave Stokes. I'm a technology evangelist for Percona. And remember, databases run better with Percona. Yes, MySQL DBAs can learn Postgres. Now, this is a series for those who know MySQL, who want to expand their knowledge, see how, how it works with other databases, uh, find out how things really work behind the scenes on another database, or are looking to expand their career horizons. The more you know, the better uh, prospects you have for a new job. So let's start off with something simple. What is a transaction? Uh, the relational database model uh, is built around asset compliance, and I'm not going to go into all that. But basically, a transaction allows a grouping of one or more queries as a set. And that set can be committed, which means put into the database, as a complete set. All of it goes in or none of it goes in. Uh, the great thing about this, if you're halfway through it and you realize something's wrong, you can back out and you haven't uh, done anything to change the database. Uh, nothing's been committed. So if you find out something, uh, some sort of calculation goes wrong in the middle of it, you can actually back out of it. Now, the classical example that they use in programming schools is uh, moving money from one bank account to another. If something goes wrong, it's like the the account the money's coming from doesn't have enough money, the transaction's canceled. By the way, banks don't actually do that, do everything batch processing, which is kind of nasty, we won't go into that. Now, if all goes well, the money is deducted from the first account and added to the second account. At least that's the way it works in theories. Oh, oh, by the way, to make things even more complex for you, there are things you can do to make transactions even more complex. You can have save points, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, within a transaction so you can back up to a certain point within the transaction but not lose all the previous work to that point okay the first thing to notice uh, this is something different that you won't see in the mysql cli is that when you type in start transaction that the prompt goes from the this to having the little asterisks in there to let you know that you are running a transaction. You're in the middle of a transaction. Nice little visual clue there. Okay, our first example. And fortunately, this isn't a simple example, but it's a good example, I hope you think. We're gonna start a transaction. And you have to type to start, start transaction. And insert into Z. This is a table I made up that has one column named Z, that's an integer. We're gonna insert a value of one. And of course, the database comes back and says, yeah, I've inserted one row. Now, at this point, we're going to issue a save point. So we've inserted one to the data in our transaction, and we start a save point. Now we insert another value, and this one just happens to be two. And if we take a look at all our data we have, we have one and two. Now, remember, one comes from the beginning of the transaction, and two comes after save point A. That will become... Uh, more clear in just a minute why I did that. Okay, now we have a, a second save point. We're going to call that B. And we're going to insert a third value into our table. And when we do that, we can see that we have one, two, three. Start of the transaction, save point A, save point B. Now, remember, value one was added at the start, two was added to after save point A, and value three was added at after save point B. I'm kind of hammering this home just so this next point will make uh, a lot of sense. So if we want to roll back to B, get back to, get rid of the last uh, insert we did, we type roll back to B. Now you have to put in roll back to B. Uh, you'll get the, the confirmation it's rolled back. And now if you go back and do our select, you'll see that we have the first two items we put in there. So anything we've done from save point B is now gone. Now, if you want, you can roll back to A. And once we do that, everything we've done since the original start of this, uh, anything from roll back A to this time is gone. Now, why does this happen? Well, sometimes in the middle of a calculation, uh, so like we're doing three bank accounts and we're moving stuff around, you find out the third bank account doesn't have what you want. So you need to back out of everything. That's rollback. Now, please note that if we wanted to just go from what we had after we put in the value of three back to A, we could have just done a rollback to A without having to do the rollback to B and would have got to the same point here. Uh, by the way, that's a good exercise for you to test on your own. 
Now, once you have the data the way you want it, your transaction is the way it is, and you want to save that data, you type in the word commit. That's commit with two M's. Don't make my mistake. I'm missing one M half the time. Now, if we go out to the table Z and want to see what's actually in there, what's been committed data, you'll see that we have our first record in there. Now, something else you might see, uh, this kind of confuses a lot of novices, is these two are pretty much the same. Only the difference is with tr this transaction, we use the words start transaction. On this side, we use begin. They do the same thing. As you can see, we can do a transaction here, and we do the commit, and the data is committed to the database. Just be aware that there's two different keywords to start a transaction. Well, that's the basics. There's a lot more to the subject. I really recommend you read through the manual because there's some fine points and some interesting things you can do with resetting rollbacks that are kind of uh, handy in some cases. But this is just a simple introduction to transactions and save points. Wanted to show it just a little bit different than the way MySQL does it. And once again, there's a lot more to learn on this subject. And with that, I'd like to encourage you to use transactions. Remember, this is a block of queries committed as a whole, all at the same time. And if you're doing some what-if calculations, um, if you want, you can, uh, I recommend locking for read, uh, go out and do some stuff and say, oh, what would happen if we gave everyone a 20% raise and do those calculations without having to go back and change the, the, the working data. And by the way, save points can save you a lot of grief, but do require you to do some planning to use them effectively. And with that, I want to thank you. And if you have any comments or criticisms, please send them to me. I'm Dave Stokes. I'm a technology evangelist at Percona. On Twitter, I'm at Stoker. And of course, you can always get me at my email, which is david.stokes at Thank you very much for watching, and please have a great day.